Block by block the crowd inside the London Stadium rose like an advancing Mexican wave as Mo Farah sprinted past in pursuit of the Ethiopian duo ahead. So often they have seen him win from this position but after 10 straight global titles and 4 double golds, finally, he could not find a way. Body heaving with adrenaline and emotion, he curled into the fetal position at the finish beaten in a major final for the first time in six years. Silver on this occasion stung like defeat and salt was rubbed into open wounds by his conqueror, Mukta Edris of Ethiopia, performing the iconic Mobot at the finish. This 5,000 meters was billed as the 34-year-old's perfect farewell. Those wearing Gomo face paint and waving run, far at run banners were expecting one last gold on the track before he moves to the road next year. But his rival set the tone even before the race began. Paul Chalamo of the USA, who pushed Farah all the way at the Rio Olympics, also did the Mobot and a throat-slitting gesture when the camera panned to him at the start. It is what it is, I just meant that I was going to take Mo down, said Chalamo. They seemed empty threats as the race unfolded at a sluggish pace, apparently playing into the hands of Farah, who usually relishes a sprint finish. The 17-year-old Ethiopian Suleiman Bariga, an unknown quantity, briefly went to the front but soon fell back. The Australian Patrick Tiernan also stretched his legs at the head of the pack but was unable to continue the assault. As the bell rang, the real contenders stood up. Ethiopia's Yomif Kethulcher accelerated to the front with Edris on his shoulder and Farah straining every sinew to stay with them. It took a 52-second final lap to overcome the Briton as it had for Ibrahim Gilan to beat Farah over 10,000 metres at the World Championships in Daegu in 2011, his most recent major defeat before Saturday night. The better man won on the day but I gave it my all, said Farah, I didn't have anything left at the end. Down the home straight it seemed likely Farah would miss out on the medals altogether as he found himself in rarely charted territory, boxed in on the inside lane. But he picked off a tiring Kethulcher and eventual bronze medalist Chelamo in the dying meters to take silver in 1,333.22, with Edris winning the title in 1,332.79. You have to give credit to Edris, said Farah. They had a game plan and it was three against one. They had to sacrifice one of them and it was Kethulcher, who didn't get a medal. Edris sat at the back and did as little work as possible to then hit me on the last lap. As an athlete when you get in the race, you want to cover every move but I spent quite a lot of energy making sure one was in the right place. Disappointment etched on his face, Farah completed a farewell lap draped in the Union flag. There were kisses for his young family in the crowd including twins Aisha and Amani, weeks away from the fifth birthday. Farah has not lost a major championship race since they were born. I've made a lot of sacrifices in terms of time away from my family, said Farah, it's been a long journey but it's been incredible, I need to have a couple of moments to myself to appreciate it. Farah ran with three stitches in his leg, a reminder of a spike from another runner's shoe puncturing his skin during his victorious 10,000 meters a week ago. He did not display any obvious ill effects but admitted he was drained. To be honest, the 10,000 meters, it takes so much out of me, more out of me than I realized, he said, cradling toddler son Hassan. For all the disappointment, this was still an eighth world medal to go with his four Olympic golds at home in Oregon. It remains to be seen how long Farah will keep his base in America, with his next major target presumed to be the London Marathon. There's no place like home and I've really enjoyed this journey, he said. I've got a few more races planned but in terms of track this chapter is closed. Farah remains the only individual British medalist at this championship so far. Katerina Johnson Thompson narrowly missed out on a high jump medal with a best clearance of 1.95 metres seeing her finish fifth. Had she cleared that height during the heptathlon last week she would have won gold. I won't give up on the heptathlon, she said. I know I will eventually get there one day. Unfortunately these championships weren't meant to be but there is always next year. Morgan Lake, who will soon decide on whether her future is as a multi-eventer or a specialist high jumper, finished sixth after clearing 1.95 metres with her second attempt. 
the 20-year-old said last year I was just absolutely ecstatic to make the final in Rio and this year I came sixth, so I think that just shows how much I've moved and in an environment where it'll hopefully be challenging for medals in years to come. GB win gold in men's 4x100m relay amid sad end for injured bolt, video highlights.